What's up, Prize 5 fans? I'm Brian Tong, and the e-reader market continues to be a hotly contested battleground. So hold on to your butts. It's a Prize 5 punch out between the Amazon Kindle Touch ad-free version and Barnes & Noble's Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light. Now, our judges for this fight are executive editor John Go Home Falcone, executive editor David the Bad Boy Carnoy, and myself, Brian King Kong Tong. We'll take all three judges' scores and average them out to the nearest 10th each round. The final prize fight score will be an average of all rounds using the same decimal system. We're going five rounds deep. First up is design. Amazon's Kindle Touch streamlines its design with an all-touch interface, removing the keyboard and using a physical home button. It has a minimalist design with a soft textured backing and is barely slimmer compared to its competition. Now the Barnes & Noble Nook Simple Touch has a unique e-reader design with rounded corners and a backside contour design. It's more ergonomic and comfortable to hold, and the glow light version has a gray accent on the border. We wish it was a little thinner, but its smaller footprint is nifty and gives it the edge. The Nook Simple Touch gets a 4.3, and the Kindle Touch gets a 4. Next round is navigation and interface. The Kindle's navigation is simple and straightforward, but there are a few curious things. You have to use the power button to wake it from sleeping instead of just pressing the home button that's right there. The home button serves literally no other function than to go back to the home screen. And when you're reading, you have to press in a specific area up top to bring up options, even though it's a minor annoyance. But really, the OS is just too plain Jane and lacks any elegance or polish. Now the Nook Simple Touch has both touch and physical control navigation. When reading books, you can move through the pages by either touching or using the physical controls on the side to turn pages. Pressing on the screen brings up more options and the home button not only helps to wake the Simple Touch, but it's really the heart of the navigation for the main functions in a toolbar, plus holding it down activates the glow light for reading. Overall, the feel and controls here are just better. The Nook Simple Touch gets a four and the Kindle Touch gets a three. So after averaging two rounds, Barnes & Noble leads. Next round is features. The Kindle Touch can listen to music or audiobooks through its speakers or headphone jack and it really makes it more than just an e-reader. Text-to-speech is supported, but not all books can take advantage of it. Would the fall never come to an end? Amazon also touts their X-ray mode that breaks down important people, places, or topics within the reading, but again, it's not available for all books. They've continued to leave in a web browser that's still not even worth using, even if it's pinch and zoom is more like pinch and doom. Another killer feature is Amazon's lending library, and if you're an Amazon Prime member, you'll have access to 145,000 books that you can borrow, including the recent edition of the entire Harry Potter series, and that's huge. So how does Barnes & Noble counter that? Well, the Nook Simple Touch brings the most innovative feature we've seen on an e-reader since the invention of e-ink technology with its glow light. It illuminates the entire screen and allows you to read in the dark without disturbing the person next to you. Is truly a one-of-a-kind groundbreaking feature that trumps any single feature we've talked about and the Kindle team dropped the ball on this one. The Nook Simple Touch brings an SD card expansion slot for storing more content. You can go into a physical retail store and read a selection of books for free and native EPUB support is a big deal for hardcore users. Both e-readers support OverDrive for borrowing books from your local libraries. There's PDF reading support plus social hooks for Facebook and Twitter. This one's a close one, but the Nook Simple Touch gets the edge with a 4.3 for its revolutionary glow light, and the Kindle Touch gets a 4. Next round is Digital Ecosystem. The content that's being offered has become more and more significant, and this is where Amazon shines. Amazon has a larger offering of titles and often offers slightly better prices. Their lending library is a huge differentiator if you pay for Amazon Prime. Both e-readers offer books, magazines, and newspapers. You can lend some books to friends, but Amazon's Kindle Touch also lets you download Audible audiobooks, subscribe to blogs, and even download games. Barnes & Noble can't match the Amazonian beast when it comes to content, and the Kindle Touch takes this round with a 4.7, and the Nook Symbol Touch gets a 3. So after averaging four rounds, we're tied at 3.9. The final round that decides it all is value. The Kindle Touch ad-free version is $139, and if you're okay with having an ad-supported version, it will cost only $99. Now at first, I didn't mind, it doesn't get in the way of reading, but when I was hammered with Twilight ads for about a month, 
I had a change of heart. The Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light is also $139, but it sets the standard for e-readers moving forward and is well worth it if you do any nighttime reading. And you won't ever see a third-party ad on either of these. The Nook Simple Touch gets a four, and the Kindle Touch gets a three. So let's average out all five rounds, and in a battle where the Nook came out firing, Amazon hit back hard for its digital ecosystem, but it just wasn't enough, and the Nook Simple Touch with low light takes this battle 3.9 to 3.8 and is your prize fight winner. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys next time on another prize fight.